Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Glad that each one of you are here. Uh, we gather in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he is here with us because we gather in his name. So we thank God for that. We also thank God for the blessing of living in a country where we have the freedom to come into worship and uh, praise God for that. Also, we know in the summer months, we live in a free country and people can travel around. And uh, we have a lot of people traveling and going different places. We pray for travel mercies for those. So thankful some made it back in time to be here today. And also the group from North uh, Dakota, that mission team, get made it back safely. And that's a lot of driving, a lot of travel. And they had a good week and we're thankful uh, that they made it back safely. Our flowers today on the altar are given by Francis Ann Boddicker. They're given in loving memory of Harl Woods. Uh, his birthday is tomorrow. Would have been would have been tomorrow. So uh, we thankful for uh, the beautiful flowers that Francis Ann has provided for us today. Thank you, Lord. Uh, to know that uh, that for announcements. To know that uh, I. I'm trying to see anybody. We had this past week, we distributed food on Tuesday, the food, East Texas Food Bank. And uh, it was the few, the proud and the brave were there to help distribute that. And it was really hot. Uh, and there were over 400 people uh, that came through in cars. And uh, I appreciate our church being involved in helping make that happen. I was even talking to another pastor here in our community, and he was saying, you know, that that's an amazing ministry that your church helped lined up. And that was funny him uh, saying that that way, but that was a blessing and I appreciate all that did that. Did that. Tuesday night is Celebrate Recovery and it starts at six and there's a meal at seven o'clock. We come in here and we worship. And we have good worship and we have a lesson. And uh, that is a really wonderful ministry that is making a difference uh, in the lives of people. Eight o'clock, they break up into small groups. And so uh, be mindful of that. It's open for any of us. And you can also tell others. And uh, God is doing a good work through that ministry. Choir or handbells aren't practicing through the summer, right? No. So, do, so not doing that. Uh, and pastor's Bible study on Thursday morning is not going to happen this week or next. I have some other obligations both of these coming weeks uh, that I have to be uh, involved in. So that that's not going to happen. We did have a new adult Sunday school class start this morning. So that was at 10 o'clock uh, and it's called Flourish. And I, I know a number of you went to that. So praise God for that getting rolling and I uh, look forward to that continuing in the weeks to come. Lakeview Church Camp. Next Sunday on the 3rd, uh, a good number of our counselors, our counselors are supposed to go on the 3rd and get there and make their plans. On the 4th, July the 4th, we'll, our children will do, and youth will go. I think right now we have like 25, 26 kids signed up, five counselors, right? I'm, I did this on 30, so she's added one, but on 30 uh, counselors and 25 campers and five campers, We've got actually 26, so it'd be more. But that would be $13,240, like something like that, that we'll be writing a check to Lakeview. So please be in prayer for that. I know we've been taking scholarships, uh, and we kind of walk in that balance of trying to you know, give to some of these extra things while taking care of the church and giving our regular offerings. So a uh, little bit of a journey during the summer. So be praying on both sides of that. Uh, we... Gail needs some help in the office on some days, July the 8th, then the 11th and 12th and 14th. And it's basically been there to help answer the phone and deal with the traffic that comes through. If you'd be interested in just learning more about that, you can call Gail uh, and she'll help you know that. But we like helping her have her time off. And uh, I think she's doing a sister trip. Uh, and so we're excited for her. Any other announcements we need to make as far as activities or things like that? Any other announcements? If not, we're going to continue in our worship by standing and joining together to praise the Lord. Let's stand and sing. We're up and singing Amazing Grace. We're singing out of the Coast Ferry, so it only has four verses in the Coast Ferry. So I hope we got the same four verses. I miss that Cherokee verse. Mm -hmm. I like that one.
Apostles' Creed. Uh, what's the name of the gentleman that wrote Amazing Grace? What's his name? John Newton. John Newton okay. John Newton was a slave trader uh, and, and then came to Amazing Grace. And you know, when you hear his story kind of in the verses, it's really a powerful thing too to know his journey. And it invites us into that too, that saved a wretch like me. He always struggled with what he had done in his past, the guilt of that. And so he really leaned in to Amazing Grace. Do you know the name William Wilberforce? Do you know that name? Yeah, because yeah, William Wilberforce uh, helped get slavery outlawed in England, okay? And, and if you know England, they, they had ships, and I mean, they were involved all over the, the world and everything. And so William Wilberforce, through his life, continued to fight and take a stand to have slavery banned in England, which if that did, it was gonna impact the world. And of course, he's fighting against people who are in the house and all that, who are landowners and who have slaves and very, it's very much an economic help to them. And yet on moral grounds, he's trying to get them to see, you know, and there's a movie called Amazing Grace. And it's a powerful story of John Newton and his relationship with William Wilberforce and this song stands under that movie and that story. And, and John Newton's story in this song had great impact in England for, for slavery being banned there and the freedom that it brought. And so this, it just to me, it's just such a powerful song because there's spiritual ramifications. Every one of us knows we can stand amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, like me. And we can connect to that. But it's awesome when you also understand John Newton's story underlying that and how he had to lean into God's grace all his life for the guilt that he felt for what he had been involved in. But then out of that, too, and him being saved, he had a great impact on William Wilberforce to keep fighting the fight, keep fighting the fight, keep fighting the fight to see it done. And just how God works, how God works in things is just so amazing. We're talking about being led by the Holy Spirit today. Let's join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and the earth, and the earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the ancients are among the just the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the time we share our joys and concerns with each other are there any uh, prayer requests that we have here today uh, joys or concerns that we would like to lift up if you're behind me just kind <clears> of <throat> or something like that uh, I'm today we're talking about being led by the Holy Spirit and Gail had something happen this week that was kind of unique in that and she put it as a prayer request Joe Lynn McKnight Joe Lynn McKnight Gail had gone in the morning and had gotten two big drinks, and it was because it was a special thing, and she wasn't even sure why she got two. I guess you want to drink one, drink the other one later. But she had two drinks. She was driving here at the church, and she driving by this house, and she saw a friend of hers, uh, I think from high school, that was out mowing the grass on a ride mower. So Gail pulled in the driveway and decided to share a drink you know, with her. She had two, so she gave her a drink, and they stood there. And in their conversation, and they're just reminiscing, they mentioned another friend of theirs from high school named Joe Lynn McKnight. 
And uh, the interesting thing is Joe Lynn uh, had been feeling a burden for Ukraine. And what can I do to help in Ukraine? And uh, she started calling some different agencies and all the agencies really wanted is money. Hey, you can make a donation that helps us out. And for her, that didn't seem like she what she felt like God was calling her to do. So she continued to pray and see God's leading. She's, I guess, retired and substitute teaches is what she does. But she also drives the school bus some. Wow, that's God bless her, you know. Uh, and all of a sudden, a new bus driver showed up and they got to talking. And lo and behold, he's from Ukraine. And she said, man, it must have been on my heart to do something for Ukraine. He says, I know something you can do. She said, what? He said, you can go to Ukraine and you can be a bus driver. They need bus drivers to drive the people come across the country and they get to those towns along the border, you know, with Poland. And they need bus transportation that lasts, you know, a bit of the way to get across Poland and they need bus drivers. And she said, how do I sign up? And he told her how to sign up. So she signed up and they contacted her and they said we would it would be glorious. They said, you're going to be staying in such and such a town, 100 miles inside the Polish border. So in Ukraine, you're going to be staying in that town. And the people that make it to there, we put them on a bus and we help them get across the border in Poland. So she signed up. She was ready to go. They called her back and said, well, we don't think you're going to go to that town. That town just got bombed. Then they called her three days later and said, no, we think you are going to go to that town. Nobody died. So Joe Lynn McKnight is about to go to Ukraine, to a town 100 miles inside the border, to drive a bus to help people get across the Polish border. So we pray God's blessings on Joe Lynn, don't we? And, and uh, just uh, amazing. And, you know, I, I pray every day for Ukraine. I do. It's on my prayer list. But, but I find myself drifting in and out a little bit more these days. And this story just reminds me that I want to pray more fervently every day. We continue to pray for baby Larkin, you know, David and Beth. And so thankful he's home and uh, continue to pray for his health and healing. Billy Vines is not here today. Billy fell and sprained her ankle really severely this week. And they thought it might be broken. She had to go. It's just sprained. And then also this week, the way I understand it, that a back shed that she has out in her yard was robbed this week and so you ever know like kind of when it rains it pours sometimes and so please keep billy in your prayers if you're able to give her a call i don't mean to be alarmist but i do think we should know uh chris you have some statistics from the hospital as far as covid goes what's our situation with covid right now do you, do you know that too? Uh, 40% increase in the last three weeks. Because Tuesday night you said it was 35, right? Yes. Okay. So Tuesday night he was telling me that, that, that there's a 35% increase. He, he, with his hospital, they keep these statistics. They're watching them. And right now there's a 40% increase in COVID in our area, in our area. Okay. Uh, Paul Camp, Alvin, and Amber all have COVID. Uh, and then then I was calling Brittany Cordray this week to check on her about doing the nursery. And she said, I just got back from the hospital. I just tested positive for COVID. So don't think I can help keep the nursery. I'm telling you that not to freak out, except just to let you know, that you, we gotta be a little mindful, you know, with ourselves. And, and I feel like it's just getting that word out to be mindful, to think about things a little bit more, you know, just, even even social distancing you know like when you can to do that and be mindful the good news for all of us that if you've had your vaccinations if you've had your booster perhaps then then right now these are milder milder but if you're one of those that have any of the uh you know the underlying things we just want to be careful okay and i i, I go into that primarily because we have four members of our church right now that have covid uh, and we want to lift them up but we want to be mindful that there's kind of a spike going on in our area, too. So please be mindful of that. Any other announcements that we need to make today? Um, I'm going to be wearing a heart monitor this week and be having some tests done. So just prayers. Absolutely, yes. 
Absolutely. That's kind of important. You know, breathing is one of those important things. You know, keep your heart beating and breathing. And uh, we love you and your family, too. So we will most definitely be praying for sure. Thank you for letting us know so we can do that. All right. Yes, yeah, Sandra. Sixty first. Glory to God. Hey, hey, congratulations. And then the other thing is, well, Ron, congratulations. Condolences, Sandra. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm, you know, it really does resound to the glory of God because to be married is not an easy thing. And uh, to stay married for many years uh, is, is an awesome, glorious thing. So we do celebrate with you and we rejoice. And it does get, bring praise to God. It really does. There's no doubt. So we celebrate with you in that. Thank you for letting us know. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Yes, sir. No, for those of you who don't know, Nicole Welch, who was a member of White Church, yes. got married yesterday. Yes, yes. The bad news is her husband's choir director at Gregton Methodist Church. So we will probably lose her. Yes, she hasn't been here in a while because that's where she goes. And in fact, Suzanne goes at least once, sometimes twice a month, you know, just to be there with him and show her love support there. Thanks for saying that. I should I didn't that's good. Yeah, because we, we do we celebrate. Su Suzanne, pray for Suzanne, okay? Because man, just the week, stress, life, and I think all three girls are wanting to move back like on the property there, you know, like and so <laughs> uh, wow, you know, and so uh glory to God, but but we do celebrate over over what took place yesterday. And uh, we appreciate Suzanne and her service here. And, and uh, that, that, that's a really good word. Thank you for reminding us of that. Very good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today, okay? Lord, I thank you for your love and grace. We love you. And Lord, we only love you because you first loved us, Father God. And uh, we love so imperfectly, but we ask for your spirit, your grace upon us to love better. And thank you, Lord, that your love is steadfast, it's faithful and sure. Lord, just too, just like with Ron and Sandra about to celebrate 61 years of being married. Lord, that's a glorious thing. And there's a steadfastness and there's a faithfulness in that that is really glorious. So uh, we bless them as that in that celebration. And then even as we talk about a couple getting married yesterday, we would pray grace over them. Uh, Father God, for the longevity of their marriage and their journey, Lord, together, that their love would grow and deepen uh, with each year that goes by, Father God. And we pray for, for that, Lord. Uh, we thank you for our staff and those that serve uh, here at this church, Father God, uh, and, and just Suzanne in that, but with Meredith and uh, with Jason here getting ready to go to summer camp. Thank you for Gail. Lord, uh, thank you for Mike and for Tammy and just all our staff and serving that we would honor you. Thank you for this church body, a family of faith, brothers and sisters in Christ. Lead us by your Holy Spirit to deeper places, Father God, uh, in obedience and in serving you. And uh, just we thank you for a, a person like Joe Lynn that would have the courage uh, to even go to Ukraine to to be involved in, in what's taking place there. We pray protection, provision for her on every front. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we lift up our country. Most certainly, uh, we feel the intensity of our days. Uh, and when things, uh, you know, happen, just, just even, you know, with the recent events with Roe Wade, and then you just see how people respond to, to that in such a variety of responses, Father God. And we're reminded uh, anew that, that, that we want things to unite, not divide. So, Lord, we want to be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Help us to know how to live in a democracy. We thank you for our country and the way that it is set up and that how it's designed and that we can live within the parameters of our democracy, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that we are a family of faith, brothers and sisters in Christ, that our hearts are connected. We rejoice with those who rejoice, our hearts with those who may be struggling in health. Uh, Lord, we lift up Stacy too just this week and just guide the doctors to learn exactly what's going on, Father God. And certainly in each situation where there may be health issues, we know that you're at work and that you are the God, our healer, Lord. Thank you for your presence with us as we worship. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now it's time we normally take up the offering. We just have a basket in the back. You also know that you can give online. It is a tricky time, like when there are special needs and special offerings that you want to give to, but trying to stay faithful just with that basic giving to the church. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, our offering was like $800. That's not very good. Suzanne said that's the lowest weekly offering she can remember, and she's been here 22 years. Hey, God is faithful. He is faithful. It's just to let you know it's going on. You know what I mean? And, and he's working, and we're, we're, we're doing all right. We just want to keep going for the glory of God. That's a part of our faithfulness, and certainly we thank God for his faithfulness to us. And with the way our economy is, that's all the more. Let's just pray, and we'll find ways to be faithful. Good news for us is God is always faithful to us, and he is the provider from whom all blessings flow. So let's stand and join together and give him our praise.
want to thank Ms. Corbin for playing for us. Uh, and have to have Terry to sing for us with us. And I want to thank these choir members who've been loyal to be here every week so that we could do special music. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and um, this morning we're going to sing Worthy the Lamb Medley. And Vanessa has a solo today. Oh, yeah. 
He is worthy. Amen. You know, part of that is he's worthy for how we live every day. Uh, I don't know why the Lord's bringing historical things to my mind today. But, uh, you know, in John Wesley's story, he ran into the Moravians, right? Some Moravians. Uh, the Moravians were a group. Uh, there was a, a guy named Count Zinzendorf who had wealth. And at first he was going to give away everything. But instead, there was great conflict in Europe between a lot of the Christian groups. So he founded a town called Hernhut where people could come there of all these different types of Christians and be there. They had a prayer thing that went 100 years of constant prayer. But out of that also, they were sending out missionaries all over the world. And there was one point where two of their young men learned about this group that there were no believers in that group. It was a different, it was a distant land. And those two young men volunteered to go as missionaries to that land. But when they volunteered, what that meant was they packed up all of their belongings in a casket. And that was their suitcase because they were never coming back. They were going to go there. They weren't sure how it was going to be. Uh, and so they were on the board as the ship was going off. A bunch of the Moravians were on the shore. Many of their relatives were crying. It was their last time they were going to see them. And one of the young men walked to the back of the boat, and as they're finally selling off, he yelled, May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. I was in a church where that motto took hold at a pretty deep level. And we saw kids go different places and a lot of powerful things take place. And quite often when one of the young people would share about what they were going to do, they would say as they closed, may the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. He is worthy for how we live our lives every day. He is worthy for us to live our lives for him and for his glory. This message today is an important message in this series about the Holy Spirit. Uh, the message today is about being led by the Holy Spirit. And, and, and it kind of takes us to a key point. You know, for being a Christian, really, really for being a Christian, you're either in or you're out. You know what I mean? You either are or you're not. You, you might be contemplating being one, but that doesn't make you one. Today, when service was over, very exciting as a young person came and said, hey, I want to be baptized as they cried and there were tears in their eyes and said, I want to be baptized. And so it's exciting to know on our horizon is going to be setting up so we can do an immersion right up here on the platform uh, of this young person as they want to be baptized. God is moving. There's things taking place. It's exciting. He's calling us into that. And so as a Christian, you either are or you're not. But I want to tell you also today, we're talking about being led by the Holy Spirit. As Christians... Really, you're kind of like either kind of doing your own thing and asking God to bless it. You know, be with me, God, bless it. But I'm doing my own thing. And you're, you're just doing what you will and asking God to be with you. Or you're learning how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because we're going to be learning all our lives how to more and more be led by the Holy Spirit. Because being led by the Holy Spirit, there's moments when that's real strong. It's real powerful. There's other times when, you know, it may be go between. We're not sure, you know, or, or it's just being faithful, living out some of the things. Uh, so, so I hope that you can think about, am I seeking every day to be led by the Holy Spirit? Am I in that? Or, or is that something I may need to learn more about, about being led by the Holy Spirit? Our uh, vision here at First Methodist Gladewater is partnering with God in transforming people into fully devoted disciples of Jesus for the glory of God. I want you to know that when I was appointed here, get the map out, figure out where Gladewater's at and, 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 and find that and then start looking online. And I saw on our on our website, our vision, then somebody sent me, you know, uh, Somebody sent me a bulletin and a motto, and right there on the bulletin it says partnering with God, transforming people, and, and then I saw it on the motto, and I was really excited because, man, that's my heartbeat. I mean, I'm in. You got the right guy here. But it was funny because I did come here and start asking people, and it's like, I don't, what? Uh, you know, so hey, I want to tell you what our vision is, our mission statement is, okay? 
And I want to tell you that a key part of doing that is, one, being a fully devoted disciple, but a part of that is being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, where does that come from? In Luke 4, chapter, in Luke chapter 4, in verse 1, we read that Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes for us Methodists, we about filled with the Holy Spirit. We start getting a little nervous, okay? Like, you know, Assembly of God Church down the road, brother. <laughs> But, but let me tell you what, don't let anybody define it for you. You seek it out. What does it mean to be filled by the Holy Spirit? Like be Berean, seek it out. What does it mean to be filled by the Holy Spirit? Who are we trying to be like? Jesus. And right here we read he was filled with the Holy Spirit. We read he returned from the Jordan and he was what? Led by the Holy Spirit. Who are we supposed to be like? Jesus. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. We can look in Luke 4, 14, a little bit down. It says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit because we want to live more fully every day in the power of the Holy Spirit. I would tell you in Romans 8, 14, it also says, Paul says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And, and I know I want to be a child of the Most High God. So I want to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. So for us, if we want to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus, and then we'll be involved in making fully devoted disciples of Jesus, we want to grow in learning to be filled. And especially we're going to talk today about being led by the Holy Spirit and walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want you to know it's really interesting on Thursday. We were having pastor's Bible study on Thursday. We go over the message and we're talking about this. And one of the things I said, I want you to know I've already started praying that there will be more promptings and leadings uh, within our congregation of the Holy Spirit. Lo and behold, my phone started buzzing in my pocket or on the table. It was on the table, so it started buzzing. And I flipped it over and it was Brandon. And Brandon said, hey, I was going by McDonald's today and there was a woman sitting out by McDonald's and uh, I saw her and, and, and I, I, I could just tell she was, you know, needed help. So he went over and said, hey, can I get you something to eat? She said no. But he said, I knew that she could, I could tell she needed something to eat. You felt, you said, I felt like God was leading me to go in and get her something to eat. And so he said, so I went in to McDonald's and got her something and took it out. And he said, I just see by the look in the, her eyes when I gave it to her, you know, that it was the right thing. And he said, I know God led me to do that. About do it about right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and, and, you know, it's so wild because we just prayed that there would be more stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, Gil and Candy were in our, in our group that morning. Uh, and uh, so on Friday, they went to the post, post office. And, and together, they've only gone together to the post office, he said, three times in the last whole bunch of years, okay? Uh, and in this instance, because of stuff going on with Gil, Candy's the one that went in. And on Faith in Action Saturday, we had a young woman come to Faith in Action, and, and you could tell God was really calling us to minister to her, and we had a really you know, powerful time of ministry with this young woman. Uh, well, lo and behold, Candy went into the post office on Friday and ran into that young woman. And Candy recognized her. Gil said, I'm glad she went in because I wouldn't have recognized her. But Candy went in. Candy recognized her. They started talking. The young lady started crying. And, 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 and Candy and this young woman had a God moment right there in the post office. There was some ministry that followed up from that yesterday. And uh, I believe one day you'll get to meet this young woman and her family here at our church. God is working. God is moving. And so I want to tell you, it's an awesome thing to be in that place where you, you, you can sense that God is working and God is leading. Those have been the most exciting times of my life, and I just want more. Amen? This has been a part of my ministry over the years. I've done a lot of work, especially with young people. And so for me, I wanted to try to find some handles, let's say. How do you help somebody grow and being led by the Holy Spirit? And so, so I'm going to give you three words today. I hope if you're able to take some notes or if you have your Bible, because one, so you can take this, and I'm going to, we're going to look up some passages in Acts. And those are great passages to read through to, to, get, to get more. In putting the sermon together, I was led by the Holy Spirit. Like, don't tell as many of your stories as, as stick to the Bible stories. 
And that's where you need to pray for me, like helping Jesus. Okay. Uh, in the early service, I had Debbie sitting right there. And Debbie had told me, if you're not done by 10.05, you die when you get home. And, and uh, because because she had uh, she was wanting to get her Sunday school class started. And so there's some days you might see the fear of God. But I will tell you this certain morning, we had the fear of Debbie going on me. Okay. Uh, I think it was the first Sunday we got done that early but at, at the 9 o'clock. So you need to pray because I don't have her here pressuring me. I could go for a long time. So just help him Jesus. Amen. I'm going to try to stick to the Bible stories because those are ones you can go back and read and have fewer of my stories, which is hard for me to do because being led by the Holy Spirit has been and is one of the most exciting things in my life as you have those moments. Okay. The three words to help us learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Here's the three words. Promptings, leadings, and callings. So, so just challenge you a little bit. Say it with me. Promptings, leadings, and callings. Okay? And, 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 and that's generally the, way, the order it kind of happens. Okay? Because a prompting, a prompting is when you're doing something and all of a sudden, like you can be at the grocery store and you see the person in front of you and God might prompt you, hey, you should buy their groceries. Well, if they got beer and cigarettes, I'm out. These days, if they have meat, I'm going to think twice about it. <laughs> but, 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 but you're somewhere, something's going on, and all of a sudden, you, you kind of sense God calling you to do something. And, and, and it's always going to lead you out of your comfort zone. It's quite often going to put you maybe in a little uncomfortable you know, like situation, maybe, you know. And, 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 and so to have a prompting, and, and, and it calls you out. In, in, into something that may be uh, a little bit awkward, uh, a little bit funny, and you're not sure how it's going to go. Do I have an idea a little bit of what I'm talking about, a prompting? Just some small little thing that happens. Hey, we're going to go into Acts chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 26 through 40. And one of the things that's absolutely wild about this is, is uh, Philip gets a prompting, and we never know what might happen off of the promptings that we have. It might just seem like like a small thing or something like that, and yet we do it, and we and, and sometimes it's incredible the results of a prompting. And this story has that kind of dynamic to it. In Acts uh, chapter eight, I want to tell you, I look, I'm reading this. I, I made it on my notes out of New Living Translation without thinking about that, and it bums me out a little bit because I'm more familiar with New King James. And there's one thing in the New King James I really like that gets left out here, but bear with me, we'll figure it out. Okay. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, okay, promptings. How do promptings come? Who, who told Philip in this one to go? An angel. I want you to know promptings, it can be the Holy Spirit. It can be an angel. It could be a pastor. It could be when you're reading your Bible. Uh, it could be a teacher. It, God can, can kind of bring us those promptings a bunch of different ways. Okay, the Holy Spirit coming in, in many different ways uh, to give us those promptings. And here it says initially there was an angel that said to him, have, have any of y'all ever received guidance from an angel? Anybody? I, 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 hey, it can happen. I, I've heard of it. It's never happened to me. So that's not in my wheelhouse. I've never like had an angel appear uh, to me, but I have heard of people that. But so th this is an angel did it. To go down south, down the desert road. Now, why I like New King James is because it tells him the road to go to. And then all of a sudden it's just inserted the little phrase and it's a desert. And I laugh because I just it's almost like Philip put that in there because God will tell you to do something. And, and you'll go you, the thought will come to you. Why not to do it? OK, like like you, you God will put a prompting and you'll immediately have the, the throwback. You know, like, like, hey, you should buy their groceries. They got meat. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, like, so God will tell you, and they'll be immediately, like Satan will put it, like, why not to do it, okay? And, and, so, and, and so here, like, he told him to go to this place, and then it's just put in there, it's desert. Because, like, who wants to go to the desert? Uh, Tuesday... Hey, I tried to send out on Monday, I tried to send out an email, and in my email I was going to ask for more volunteers for Tuesday because I could tell a lot of people were out of town, I could tell we were going to be short. 
Right about time I got the email ready to send, an emergency arose in my office and somebody came in that I had to meet with for, it was a mess, it was a mess of a situation. And I thought I'd sent the email. Lo and behold, Tuesday, nobody showed up to help hardly. And I wanna tell you, Tuesday, it was desert. <laughs> Out there, man, it was so hot. Debbie had, Debbie Debbie on, two, on Monday said, hey, I think I'm not going tomorrow. It's going to be hot. I said, Debbie, we need you to go because, man, it's like not many, you know. Well, Debbie Debbie had to go sit down for a little bit on Tuesday. She Her face turns purple when she gets overheated, and somebody looked at her and said, hey, you need to go sit down. Roger had to go sit down, but we made it. Over 400-something people were served, and it was hot, but it was desert, okay? So, Philip, it's desert. I don't want to go there, but anyway, he did go. It says, so he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under uh, the Kendoki, the queen of Ethiopia. And the eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning, seated in his carriage. He was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah and the Holy Spirit. Now this time it's the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. So Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah and Philip asked, do you understand what you were reading? And the man said, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. And the passage of scripture he had been reading was this, totally about Jesus. He was led by like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. And then the eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this scripture, Philip told him the good news of the gospel. I got to ask you again, where were they at? Desert. Desert. So if you don't think the story's weird so far, let's get it weird. Okay, because all of a sudden now he teaches him the gospel. All of a sudden the unit comes to a point of conviction. And when they came and, and as they rode along, they came to water. Where are they at? Desert. But all of a sudden in the moment that the guy comes to conviction to believe in Jesus Christ, all of a the sudden there's water. And he says, why can't I be baptized? My, so he ordered the carriage to stop. They went down to the water and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. That had to be something to see. The eunuch never saw him again and he went on his way rejoicing. It is believed that this eunuch is the person that carried the gospel to Africa. Hello? Wow. Philip could have said, oh, man, that's the desert. It's hot. Ain't nobody going to be down there. It's the desert. He could have said that. Blown off the prompting. Any of you ever blown off a prompting? I can tell you I unfortunately have. But Philip didn't blow off the prompting. He went down to the desert. Went to the desert. He met the eunuch. The eunuch's reading out of the prophet Isaiah words about Jesus. He explains them to him. All of a sudden, in that moment that he comes to conviction, there's water. He baptizes him. And now that eunuch returns back to Ethiopia and begins to share the gospel in Africa. How awesome is that? So never, never doubt how powerful something you might do, have a prompting, a, lead, a prompting or a leading to do. What, what, the, what the result of that prompting or that leading might be, you don't know. Okay? So a prompting, just some small thing, quite often, it's a short thing. It could be for a day, a moment. It's going to take you out of your comfort zone, the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, you'll hear the rationalizations, the justifications, why not to do it. And, and if you quench the Holy Spirit in those moments, the promptings will come less and less. If you obey those promptings, the promptings will come more often. Okay? But then our second word. What's our second word? Leadings, okay? I want you to know that leadings are generally more involved. They're probably going to take more effort to do. They're going to take more time, okay? Uh, if you're called to go into an Emmaus walk, if you're led to go into Emmaus walk, that's going to take you out of your comfort zone. You're going to start hearing that they take your phone away, that they take your watch away. And you're going to start hearing things. You're going to think, man, I'm not doing that. That's weird. You know, like you have to sleep like 
you know, with somebody, whether you know them or not, and you just have to surrender to the process, like, man, I ain't doing that. Well, you'll miss the blessing. If you're called to sponsor somebody to go on Emmaus Walk, to sponsor somebody is a pretty big effort, you know, to do that. There's a lot of responsibility. But if you feel led to sponsor somebody for Emmaus Walk, it's a big deal. To serve on Emmaus Walk could be a big deal. Uh, those are just some ideas of, of leadings. Uh, I had a friend of mine in 1997. He had started going to church like in 1994. And the reason why he started going to church because his kids, teenage kids, were kind of having problems. And he looked around and he saw a couple of their friends who were doing you know, better in school and life. And, and he realized they were coming to our church, to the youth group. So he thought, let's, honey, let's go to that church and get our kids in that youth group. So he was going to church for the kids. <laughs> But all of a sudden, a couple years later, he felt led to go to Costa Rica on a mission trip. And so he signed up and he went on that mission trip. And when he went on that mission trip, God connected our hearts together in a powerful way. In uh, 2001, he felt called to go to Germany to lead a mission trip. He asked me if I would go with him for that time to help him get that set up. We went to Germany on a mission trip. Since 2001, he's done, uh, he's done mission trips to Germany. This year, he will go to Germany for a whole month and lead baseball camps. And there will be young people that get saved and come to the Lord and who are deepened in their discipleship. And he'll be there for a whole month. He was telling me, he was laughing. He said, it's just so funny watching the whole thing grow. He said, this year we're spending $8,000 on T-shirts. <laughs> He said, how crazy is that? But they have teams. And so every, you know, every camp has like five teams that has 10 you know, people on each team, 50 to 70 kids at every camp. And they have to have T-shirts because that tells them what teams they're on is they teach them baseball and play the games. And, uh, and, and he's been doing that all these years. But it all started with being led to go on a trip to Costa, to Costa Rica. Hey, in Acts 10, in Acts 10, it launches into a story of Cornelius and Peter. And, and that story goes on for a little bit, but it's a story of a leading because God led Cornelius to send some guys down to get this guy named Peter. And so he sends his guys. Then God appears to Peter and he starts telling Peter like about the Gentiles and that it's okay. And all of a sudden he says to Peter, hey, some guys are going to knock on your door and I want you to go with them. And about that time there was a knock on the door. Hey, Peter, go with us. Okay. And so he goes with them up to Cornelius. All of Cornelius' household gets saved. Okay. But even bigger than that, Peter learns that the gospel is supposed to be taken to the Gentiles. So in Acts 15, you have the Jerusalem Council, and they're deciding, like, is this kind of a Jewish sect thing, or is this bigger than that? Are we supposed to take to the Gentiles? Paul's arguing that we're supposed to take it to the Gentiles, but he's kind of a newcomer. He wasn't with Jesus. And so everybody really looks to Peter and says, Peter, what do we do? And, he's, and Peter says, well, I had this thing with Cornelius, and God really revealed to me that we're supposed to take the gospel to the Gentiles. So it was a leading that involved Cornelius and involved Peter. I got involved in something like that with Guatemala. That's really been an amazing journey. And because God had to orchestrate some things. If you get a chance to read that one, that one's good. But we don't have time for all of that. So we're going to go to Acts 16. And we're going to read verses 6 through 10. And this one is amazing to me. And there's this one raises more questions for me than it answers. But that's a part of how being led by the Holy Spirit is. In Acts 16, 6 through 10, it says, Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. How does that happen? I mean, like, I want to know, like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Did the, did the carriage have a flat? I mean, did the wheel fall off? Was there one of those barrier things like you see in the movie, like they, you, know, you don't see it, you walk into it, you know, that, hey, we can't, we can't go that way. So, so like I laugh when you're reading the Bible, I want to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And then you come to this, they were forbidden to go like, well, what does that mean? That doesn't help me very much. No, like, how do I know if I'm forbidden or not? Like. How did they know that? But somehow they knew they were forbidden to go. So after that, they had come to Mysia and they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit did not permit them. 
I want to tell you one of the big challenges of being led by the Holy Spirit is when you start running into challenges. Okay? Because are you running into challenges because God's trying to close the door and He doesn't want you to go? Or is Satan coming against you because He doesn't want you to go? I was fixing to leave to go to Costa Rica and I walked by a faucet by our back door and it was bent just a little bit. It was a, you know, it, the faucet came out of the ground and stood there and it was bent a little bit. And I thought, man, that needs to be straightened up. So I went, and all of a sudden water starts going like that. That night a skunk went off under our house and there were kids across the street in this country club swimming pool at 12 o'clock midnight. So I called the police. And I said, I'm never going on another mission trip again. You can skip this. And so, like, is that, what is that? You know what I mean? But so, so this is interesting that these things happen and they're forbidden to go. And, uh, but then it says, so passing by Masia, they came to Troas. And here's the deal. A vision appeared to Paul in the night and a man, man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying come over to Macedonia and help us now after he had seen the vision immediately we sought to go to Macedonia concluding the <laughs> concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to Macedonia did you know that out of the out of the letters that Paul wrote in the Bible a good number of them are written to churches in Macedonia because they were called to go to Macedonia. My first time I went to Costa Rica, I had a job and they said, Pastor Bud, we want you to lead a group to Costa Rica. There was no calling from God. It was my job and they told me I was going to lead a team and I like my job. I like getting paid. I'll have you know that here. I like my job. I like getting paid. And so I was going to do my job. And so I let them, not any leading of the Holy Spirit, just do your job. But when I was on the, at, in Costa Rica and we were getting ready to leave, I'm sitting on the plane and I look out and I see the Costa Rica terrain and I just really basically start crying and realize I'm coming back, that God has called me here to, to, to work and, and to do that. And, and it was at that moment, it turned more into a leading and a calling at that moment. And so uh, for them, they were called to Macedonia. So you have promptings, you have leadings, and now we're going to talk about callings, okay? Callings are more involved. Callings are going to take months, years, perhaps your whole life. How many of you are believers in Jesus Christ in here today? How many? Hello? Yeah, I'm looking. All right, glory to God. Hey, I want to tell you, if you didn't know it, you're under a calling. And that calling is Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Anybody know what, what that verse is? What is Matthew 18 through 20? Go ye therefore, we call it, what do we call it? The, the great... The Great Commission. Hey, if you're in church today, I have to let you know you're under the Great Commission. That's a calling you got on your life. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always to the close of the age. How are you doing fulfilling your Great Commission? It's a calling on your life. Partner with God and transform people into fully devoted disciples of Jesus teaching them to so oh oh yeah good for the fully devoted disciples of Jesus for glory of God amen so we stand under that calling and 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 that's what we're supposed to do uh, if you're married I need to let you know you have a calling in case you didn't know that if you have children you have a calling if you have grandchildren, you have a calling. And so, so callings really are the things that give our lives meaning and purpose. You know, uh, I, when I was, when I was a, a senior in high school, when I was a sophomore in high school, I, I really, God took me deeper on what it means to be a Christian. When I was a senior in high school, I went to a winter retreat and God called me to be a preacher. And, and I knew I was supposed to preach the word. And so I live under that calling today. And I want you to know I have no greater, one of my greatest joys, one of my greatest joys is, is putting together a sermon and trying to come preach the word to you every Sunday. Help him Jesus. Yes, help him Jesus. But, but preach the word to fulfill that calling. What are the callings of your life? They give your life meaning. They give your life purpose. And so God wants us to have promptings. He wants us to have 
leadings, who wants to have callings, and in these things are the way that we grow in learning to be led by the Holy Spirit, and it'll be all our lives. Are you with me, church? Are you with me, church? And I am praying for us, even in these days, that there will be more promptings. And it was just so awesome, Brandon, you're bizarre how your text came right as we were talking about that. Uh, just the young lady that came up today talking about being baptized. Uh, there's another young woman that sat on the back row at 9 o'clock service. And, and it was awesome knowing how God has changed her life in the last six months to the last year. She and I talked about it just for a moment this morning. That's just totally, she's a totally different person because of what God's doing in her heart and her life. Church, you're a part of that. Many times I, as the pastor, you know, I get front row seats and stuff, and maybe you see it or you don't see it. And, and, but man, it's awesome how God is working. There was somebody else in the early church sitting right over there that their life is so different now from what it was six months ago. God is working. And he wants to give us promptings and leadings for us to know how to be a part of that, how to do that. Somebody gave me a gift to a ministry that I'm a part of, and I was able to get $100 worth of gas to give to that person so they can keep getting to their job because they, get, they don't get paid now until July the 8th. And I, we as a church have been involved in helping them along getting to that point. And on July 8th, they get their first paycheck for a while. So, hey, hallelujah. God is working. He's calling us into his kingdom purposes. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to stand and close the scene. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ and you want to be baptized today, you can come and let me know. We can talk about that. If you're not a member of this church and you want to be a member of this church, and help Mike get on the stage with no accidents. Uh, you can be a member. You can uh, be a member if you want to rededicate your life to that today. You can do it from where you sit. You can come. Let me know. Uh, but let's respond to the promptings and leadings of God as we sing. Just as I am. traveling for those of you watching online as well you're a part of this uh it's this is one of my favorite things who are we we, we are christ's family and we have come to worship the lord and to give him praise thank you lord god for the way you love us we ask you now to lead us by your holy spirit i hope you'll do that in jesus name amen be blessed as you go today praying for more promptings, those leadings and calls of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.